Hello, so in chapter 4 when you reach the first shrine and you fight the first boss which is called the second sister, kind of like in Jedi Survivor, right? The sisters. You can do a lot of things actually. Now, you should always craft and use, in my opinion, the stuff that you get from there because it's amazing. It has a 5% crit chance, 80 damage, but it also means you recover health through heavy attacks while having focus points. And this might sound familiar. Wait, I thought I saw something related to that when I was leveling up. Yes, you did. So this heals you a little bit, but it's not so obvious. So now you actually have two healing items or two healing methods that you lose heavy attacks while having focus points. And also, as you can see, this also has a crit chance as well, so that will be amazing. I just made a golden armor set because it felt the right thing to do. Now, it's not very clear what it does, but let me break it down for you <laughs> a little bit. So the spirit skill or the vessel which is the transformation or the spirit skill will give you a bit of a damage. For me, I think it's about 14 points of damage. I'm not sure if it's a bad stat, bad value or anything. Okay, 24 and then I go up to 108. Below my bars over there, if you can see it, below the stamina bar. It's a little bit weird that it's hidden like that, but it really, really works. So basically what it does, what this does is that you are able to heal just using your attack points and some other stuff. Also let me show you what I invested my points in. I guess I could have done this a little better, but overall I like the stamina bonuses because the perfect dodge is something you really need over here. Plus the stamina reduction. These things, to be honest, I don't really think you need them, but I made them so I can uh, have an easier time with the normal enemies. Of course, more health, more stamina, more crit chance, and then more mana. And over here just put a few points into each of them, but it doesn't seem like it's worth it in the beginning of the game. You might as well just focus on the mana and after that go into something else. Craft stances over here already showed you this one. Heavy, heavy. Such a good idea to go into the heavy movement set just because, should I put it, you have a chance to hit the boss for a lot of damage and that will really, really tell because some of the fights I won in my first attempt without too much... Without too many problems, just because you charge up an attack and if you're lucky to hit the boss, you'll also stagger it and yeah. Coupled with the light attack improvements, this will really go for massive damage. Now I know some people prefer the pillar stance and it's great and it's nice, but... I just don't like it because it's too gimmicky. Sometimes it will work very well, sometimes it will not work very well. The frost stance seems like it's a good idea, but in my opinion it's... It's a trap, because most of the times you're not able to have the focus points to do these wonderful attacks, while oppo as opposed to those ones. Over here, you can just charge up your staff attack with the focus points and do a heavy attack for maximum damage, which is so great. You can also put more points into this one, that basically activates the Skyfall Strike and the other one, the Sea Through Enemy, which I'll probably level up next, so I'll have to go over here and max it out. I put a few points over here in Immobilize, just because I like the way it sounds. So casting Immobilize no longer drops light attack combo, which is the way you should be using it. Also, this helps a little bit. I wanted to get the last one as well, but as you can see, it consumes mana. I think you should keep your mana for uh, stuff like this. Sometimes it's just better to stun the boss or immobilize the boss to interrupt his attack and then go and attack him and damage him. Sometimes it's not better that you have a longer duration of the immobilize, you just need to time it better. These two over here I will not really use. Spellbinder is amazing, but... As you can see... It's kind of annoying losing all of your other abilities. I think this is the way to play the game in the endgame, and you'll see probably record boss fights with this one, but it also costs 110 mana points, so that will be all of your mana, as opposed to 50 over there. Alteration, don't really use it. Strand, I use Strand quite a bit and as you can see I level up the starter ones. You can also level up the starter ones and yeah, that will be enough. So hitting the enemies moderately extends the duration of duplicates, really needed that one. Maximum health, needed that one as well. And you can actually go over here to the last one which is amazing, but to be honest, you would need to put points into this one as well. And I don't like stuff that consumes more mana, I think that's the problem. And using another spell so these two over here i don't want to put points into them and that's why i didn't do it i guess this one is interesting as well but you want to use this one for bosses and usually the monkeys don't survive that long now in transformation just increase the might so yeah that's kind of like my level up so we went through the weapon and now let's go through the spirits 
Basically, there are two types of spirits. I think in most of the fights, I'll end up using the red hair reaction just because I like the bow attack. Plus, we do a lot more heavy attack damage, which is great, and probably this is what I'll end up for boss fights. But for normal farming, I just prefer this guy because look at that. His key cost is low, and you get extra critical chance, critical damage, and damage as well. So, as you can see, I got 12 attack. Well, let me. Uh, let me rest, let me rest, so we don't have to deal with the bonus attack from the skill itself. Now the combination that you use the non-able is are kind of silly because they are short range and should only be used when you are in melee range of the boss. But 10 attack, 3% crit chance and 6% crit damage is quite amazing. As you can see I lost 100 mana, so that's why I increased my mana and did some other things. Definitely one of the strongest, if not the best in the beginning of the game. Well, I guess you get it kind of late into the game as well, chapter 3, and until that point I used to use this a lot just because it gives you 24 defense, which is amazing. So this one is also very very good, and after that, I guess it's up to everyone to decide what they like more. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much, I think the Red Archer and some of the other stuff are also pretty good. But yeah, these two over here are kind of like the best and then you have the tiger because you get more attack but you have less self which is a bit annoying. So this is a very very tricky thing to use but for farming you can use that. So yeah, these two are the best in my opinion. This is the fur just for the utility you have and then the wolf assassin just for the crit chance. As you can see this will increase your crit chance quite a bit but yeah, I think it's only 3% if you don't upgrade it. So yeah, it also is Q cost moderate. So. Definitely, I think the top 4 spirits are these ones over here and this one for farming, but not much else, otherwise you'll die kind of fast to bosses. There are some other good ones, but again, we already have 4. Like this one, gaining additional focus on hit. Or full. Now, I like this one because, like I said, you can use the spirit attack a lot of times and that means you get a lot of focus, super nice. Okra, Arm Guard. As you can see, upon using a focus point, you model an increased critical hit chance. I think this is a 5% increased chance. So, yeah, basically, if you use a focus point for a big attack, then you have even more crit chance and you'll be able to crit even more. So, that's why it's the Ochre. Now, over here, I have the Curios. I have the Cat Eye Beads. No question about it. It's very nice. A Golden Spike Plague, which you get from a giant. Before the Thunderclap Temple, I think it's at the end of the zone before you enter the temple itself, so explore a little bit. It's 24 defense. I'm not sure. Oh, it's 32 defense, really? So I guess it's multiplicative. Huh. Anyway, enemies will take damage upon taking hits, which is kind of interesting, but what can you do? And the Gold Flora Helping is also very important because it will reduce the amount of farming you need to do. As you can see, I have basically no more will left because I bought all of the stuff from the vendors in chapter 3 and this chapter as well. Plus I did a lot of other things. I can do even more things. I didn't upgrade any armor as you can see because I don't recommend you do it until chapter 4 and near the ending. You don't really get a lot of useful stuff in the first 1, 2, 3 chapters of the game. So keep your upgrades for armor for later because right now if you get new armor it will have much more defense than the previous ones. So... For example, the Pilgrim Garb can be used to kind of cheese the bosses if you have Spellbinder, if you have the Non-Able and the Pilgrim Garb. You can do some super super damaging attacks with the Sprint. Certainly this is a little bit overpowered, so as you can see, if you want to upgrade something, upgrade the Pilgrim Garb. So, you see the massive improvement in defense as you go through the armors, right? Right. But you can also have, find some interesting things like the Vaja Arm Guards and some of the other stuff, which is a drop, a curio drop. Uh, as for the gourd, I use the fiery gourd just because it has seven sips. To be honest, the trailblazer gourd is too good, too good. They shouldn't have gave it as a pre-order bonus, but and that's this is what I used until I got the fiery gourd. It doesn't really matter what the bonus is, I just like to use it because it increases maximum stamina for a little bit plus. That's 7 sips. It's the highest amount of sips you can get without upgrading it. As for the drink itself, again, you don't really have a choice over here. In the beginning, use the lamb brew a lot until you get to the jade essence, which gives you health, but it also gives you mana, which is amazing. And as for the soaks, not 
tu must to say about this, it seems like it always be the same, the Celestial Lotus Seed and then the Tiger Relic just because it gives the increased critical hit chance. So if you count the critical hit chance, well I guess I can show you. So my normal one is 17, right? What if I do this? Then it's 22. Well, I think it should be a little more. Anyway, you can also use a Tiger Pellet to increase your critical chance, but I like to use the Ginseng Pellet, which basically increases your focus, so I recommend you use it because it's amazing. And then next one should be the Tiger Enhanced or the Tiger Subduing because you get more damage. I don't really think you would need the longevity decoction or some of the other stuff. In the beginning I also recommend you use the fortifying medicine because you will not get interrupted which is kind of interesting as well. And probably the evil repelling medicine because it's very good. But at this point of the game the, you should only be using the stuff that removes the status effect of the, pre, of the chapter. So in chapter 3 you will have to remove chilling and shocking effects. In this chapter you will have to remove poisons on the anti-miasma. <laughs> Ginseng pellets because they are great to give you focus which gives you damage which gives you crit chance and health restoration like I showed you. And the uh, last slot should be used for the tiger pellets or if you are having problems with some bosses the longevity ones. Now I recommend you keep the really cool stuff for bosses only like this one. Instant reset for all spells. Cool health. Instant removes all four banes. As you can see some of these epic ones are going to be super important for some boss fights. So right now my setup is like this. I also like to keep the Mirage Pill because you gain a considerable amount of Might, which is the thing that you need to transform. As for my transformation, well, I'm not sure. I guess this depends on a couple of things because it's a little bit harder than it looks. There are a few transformations that are very good, but in the end I end up, I end up choosing only one. So the first transformation you get of the Flaming Wolf is the best one. I used that basically until this point. The Rogue is pretty annoying, I don't like it. The In Tiger is very very good, but it's more or less for defensive purposes. So if there's a fight you need to survive longer, just try and use this one. But since you get it so late, you're not really that good in damage terms. The Rat Prince, not the Rat Prince, I guess it's just a normal rat which attacks a lot and does a lot of damage. It's tanky, it's fast, it does a lot of damage, it has a heavy and a light attack, plus the flaming attack, which is amazing, plus it detonates to do a lot of damage as well in the end. So this is probably the best transformation until this point of the game. And then you can also have the monk, which does a lot of damage but has no mobility. And then over here we have another one, which is the... Well, I guess this is the Macau or... No, 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 the Umbral thingy. Okay, let's actually look at this a little more. The macaque, the donkey. It's kind of nice, but I think the problem is that it's a bit janky. As you can see, you kind of walk around towards an enemy. And the combos are pretty wide. And it's kind of like a more forward attack. So let's power up. And then you get extra damage on your blade and also the wings to help a little bit of mobility, but that's not really enough in my opinion. Because it's a general purpose transformation, it doesn't have a, a very very good attribute, so it's kind of like the jack of all trades if you want to have the monkey, but I still think the rat is better. Now let me show you the Horfrost Monk and why it's so good, because it just hits the enemy. That's all I can see, it will hit the enemy and it will do a lot of damage, but sadly it's lacking a lot of mobility, so before you use it, you kind of have to chain it together, so you will be near the enemy, you're preferably fighting the enemy. So let me show you how this to just use this one. And the big swipe basically hits everything around you, you cannot really miss. Come on, swing your tentacles. Come on, activate your ultimate ability. And then you do that. 
So it's still kind of like a bit of a nuanced choice because yeah, the rod can be a little better in certain situations and it's a little more tanky but if you can pull off those big attacks and then you just do the charge attack, it's more or less the same amount as the damaging, the damage that that can do with the sword and then detonating. So I guess that's also a choice but I'll try to stick with the monk because I guess in most situations you'll want to chill your enemy because burning doesn't seem to be that good. And that's kind of it. See you next time. Bye bye.